خلیفہ کے ہم ہیں خلیفہ ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا 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 خلیفہ ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا خدا پاک کی غالب ہوئی تقدیر زائن We are truly honored that you have traveled thousands of miles to be with us here this evening. I know of no other community of faith that I've ever encountered who so fully embody the teachings that they profess. The city of Zion is fortunate that such a peace-loving and service-oriented community has decided to settle down here and build such a beautiful mosque. Hazrat Khalifatul Masih V's historic tour of the United States continued into its second week on Saturday the 1st of October 2022. A special reception was held to mark the inauguration of the first mosque built in the city of Zion. More than 140 guests, including politicians, media outlets, academics and local residents, were able to listen to a most powerful address by Hazrat Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ayyadahul Ata'ala bin Asr al-Aziz. Prior to the reception, Hazur was interviewed by Yadira Sanchez Olsen, a reporter for the Lake County News Sun. In, in this day and age when there's much fear, uh, crime and homelessness, uh, food insecurity, what would be your message so that there's less fear? This was the claim of the founder of the Ahmadiyya movement, then why did he come? He said, the purpose of my coming is twofold. One is to bring the people close to their creator, and secondly, to discharge your duties you owe to your fellow beings. So if you are discharging your duties to fellow beings, there should not be any fear of crime, food shortage, security, or anything else. So that is what we have been doing all the time. We are preaching, we are conveying this message, and we are practicing this message everywhere, wherever we have our community, in Africa even, in Pakistan, in other Asian countries, third world countries, or deprived countries, or the Western countries. Wherever we go, we convey this message, and we are running our schools, our hospital, to serve the humanity, and in so many ways we are serving the people. Do you think that there is a formula for all of the religions and the people who follow them to work toward peace? You see, if you realize your duties, as I have already said, towards your Creator and uh, get closer to Him, you realize that uh, we have been created by one and omnipotent God in Allah. And the purpose of creating us in this world was not just to kill each other or destroy each other. All the religions came from Allah. We believe this. We believe that all the religions were true religions, originally. And later on, there were some innovations in their teachings, and the teachings were distorted. And then, ultimately, It was also the prophecy of all the prophets, all the founders of the religions, that in the latter days the prophet will come, who will bring the teachings of all the prophets. They, he will combine them. He will give the true teaching of them. And his teachings will be the final teachings. And we believe that that person who was foretold by the previous prophets or the founders of previous religions is the holy prophet of Islam. Peace and blessing of Allah be upon him. And this is why you can see till today the holy scripture, the holy book of Muslims, which was revealed to the holy prophets of Islam وسلم, is still intact. There is no change in it. Whereas the other books have changed in so many ways. And it was also foretold 
by him, the Holy Prophet of Islam, that although the teaching, the scripture will remain intact in its original form, but my followers will also forget the true teachings of Islam. They will leave the true teaching of Islam. And then that time, there will be a reformer who will be from among my people and he will also reform. And we believe that that person is Mirza Ulam Ahmad of Qadiyan, who is the founder of the Amdiya community, whom we believe is the Messiah and Mahdi of this age. He asked all the religions that whether you believe in my religion or not, you believe in Islam or not, you come and follow me or not, but at least we should all live together amicably, harmoniously, and with love and affection. And this is how we can live together in this world, and this is how we can fulfill the purpose of our creation. So, this is the message. This is the only way, right? Mm -hmm. Following the interview, Azur held meetings with dignitaries and guests, including Dr. Craig Considine, Professor of Sociology at Rice University. How are you? I'm excellent. How are I'm you? Amjad Khan Sahib wanted to introduce you to me. I said, if I didn't know the professor, then nobody knows him. <laughs> huh? It's a great honor, Your Holiness. So I'm happy that you were here yesterday and ended our Pride Day sermon. It was one of the best khutbas I've heard. I have another book coming. You'll be featured in many ways. What is it about? I'm talking about something beyond the dialogue of civilizations. I just, just pray that your book comes out before they destroy the whole world. They are trying to be very much trigger happy. I thought it is only mullahs. They are going to be trigger happy. Now, the situation has changed. The Asian leaders are even trying to calm them down. One of the, one of the messages is um, it's really love. And I think that's, this is probably one of the reasons why I feel such an affinity for love. the Ahmadiyya community. Love for all, hatred yeah. for none. This is the message everybody's forgetting. It's so fundamental and quintessential, and, we've, and it's such a beautiful thing, because love feels so good. We are all humans, so at least we should respect each other as humans. And if we realize how to respect each other, then there will be peace, love, and harmony. This basic thing they don't want to understand. You know, how can you love when you can't even respect, you know? Like, love is the, the peak, but to get to that love, you have to do a lot of the difficult work, and. That respect is a lot of that difficult work to get there. Here we misinterpret the word freedom. Even the students, the youngsters, they think we are free to say everything. We are free to do whatever we like. It is not necessary that we respect others or not. This is our right to do whatever we like. This is why now we are deviating from the basics of a good human being. Even we are trying to deviate from our traditions from things which are good for our life. It's a pity. So you are originally from Boston? Yeah. yeah. The same place where Event. the newspaper wrote about uh, yeah. our oh, founder. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. What a, I feel so honored and blessed to be here. I feel the significance of what's happening here. And, um, so, what a story. So Boston is quite a fertile land with regards to good people. I was, I'm so thankful that I got to spend personal time with you. Um, it's a great honor for me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for all your kind gesture. Thank you. Inshallah, maybe one day, I'll, uh, I would love to visit you in your home in London, in that area. Yes, I will be waiting for you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Your Holiness. Dr. Katrina Lantos Sweat, professor at Tufts University and president of the Lantos Foundation for Human Rights and Justice, also had the opportunity to meet with Azur along with her daughter, Chelsea Hedquist. For the last week and a half since we were planning our trip, both of us have been a little bit walking on air because we feel so much that it is an extraordinary special experience to be with you. You know, we feel that light and that wisdom that comes from you and somehow 
our days go better and our weeks go better after we've had the opportunity to be around you. So we thank you. It's thank quite you. a privilege for thank us. You. And, um, thank you. And uh, it, it means a great deal to us. And, and for such a celebration, such a wonderful celebration, this is the most amazing story ever, the prayer duel, I must say. It is such an incredible story. It's just, it's so powerful, but I think your holiness, what I love about this story more than anything else is that it captures and reveals the very powerful spirit of um, of His Holiness, the, the founder of the Amdiya community, yes, and the spirit of the community today. This sort of strength that comes from the confidence of faith. Your own self is also the sign of His success. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Brother. As as you are conveying our message and. Wherever you go, you say the Amdiya community is the only community which practice love and it's, preach love. It's true. It's so right? true. And you are you our know, ambassador in another way. Oh, well, <laughs> nothing could make me more honored than to be an ambassador for this amazing community. And you know, of course, my heart breaks. Both of ours do. Most recent terrible news in terms of what's going on in Pakistan. It's just, it's horrible. This is, ongoing process not only at the same pace but now it has increased now they say that uh, all the um, the pregnant women their pregnancy should be aborted they should not give birth to anybody so they have gone one step ahead of the Phryna of Egypt he said that uh, any newborn baby of Israelites boy should be killed that is what Phryna of the Egypt announced and they say now their pregnancy should be aborted. Yes. This is what this so-called educated world, literate world, is portraying before everybody. It is, it is so terrible, and, um, and it makes it all the more impressive and admirable that the community under your leadership, which is just so powerful, doesn't answer evil with evil and it doesn't answer hatred with hatred. And yes, we are able to reply in the same way. We are more organized. We know what is the meaning of tit for tat, but we do not do it. Yes. Because our teaching, the true Islamic teaching is not that. Yes. So we pray, ultimately, we shall also win our prayer duel. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Following the individual meetings, some further guests had the opportunity to meet Huzoor. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Um, Your Holiness, I also spent some time in Ghana, and I'm ah, so curious to when, know. When was it? Um, maybe 2002. 2002. So I left Ghana in 1985, early. You went to Ghana when its economic conditions had changed completely. Which part of Ghana did you stay there? Uh, in Accra. Accra. In Accra. Yes. Not uh, in the central region or in the northern region. I traveled through there, but uh, was an exchange between Chicago and, and Accra. Uh -huh. I so. spent almost four years in the north, in the remote areas of northern part, and then four years in the south. Very different places. <laughs> and even that, not in Accra, in some villages or small towns. So I know the roots of Ghana. <laughs> After the meetings, His Holiness proceeded for the reception of the Fateh Azim Mosque, built in Zion, the city where the great prophecy concerning Alexander Dawi was fulfilled. Prior to the awaited keynote address of Huzur, attendees heard from a number of guest speakers who took to the stage. It's my wish and my prayer that this house of worship will serve as a bridge between our past and our future. So it's with deep gratitude for the outstanding services rendered by the Ahmadiyya Muslim community to the city of Zion and your commitment to furthering the development of the city and improving the well-being of its people that we present the key of the city of Zion to His Holiness. His Holiness is also a champion of women's rights. 
as I can personally attest from spending time with the Ahmadi Muslim women of Zion, the female members of this community command respect and are integral to the life of the community. It's a beautiful day. And um, as I like to say, it's an honor to be with you. And it's an honor to be any place they can pronounce my name right. <laughs> we entered into the congressional record of the United States uh, a commemoration of this historic day that will live on in history to remember what happened today and this joyous occasion. Today, the followers of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, the promised Messiah and Mahdi, the guided one, offer thanks to Allah the Almighty that we are inaugurating the Fateh Azim Mosque, the mosque of the grand victory in Zion as a symbol of true religious freedom. Its doors open with an enlightened message pronouncing that the religious rights and peaceful beliefs of all people and communities are to be forever protected and cherished. It is the paramount objective of the Amdi Muslim community to direct mankind to the path of spiritual salvation and to ensure that all people, irrespective of their caste, creed, or color, live together with the spirit of goodwill and harmony and in true peace and security. From the depth of my heart, I pray that this mosque will God willing, always serve as a beacon of peace, tolerance, and love for all mankind. I pray it proves to be a place where people congregate in all humility to recognize their creator, to bow before him, and to fulfill the rights of mankind. For we earnestly believe that we can only be successful and prosperous if we fulfill the rights of worship of God Almighty and the rights of humanity. With these words, I wish to once again thank you all for joining us this evening. May Allah Almighty bless you all. Amen. Thank you very much. I also thank the mayor and the other Raja Sahib. I don't remember the name, otherwise you will say I did not pronounce your name correctly. <laughs> so, so, uh, to the mayor, for giving me the key of this town. And I'm sure that uh, now the key of this town is in the safe hands. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was overwhelming for me uh, to meet His Holiness tonight. And this is the first time in my life that I've met someone that I was speechless and didn't know what to say. Great presence and the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has done so much to help in this community and be of service. You know, people have told me about how impressive he is as a speaker. I was just so overwhelmed with the words that he said about friendship and working together with the community. It made me proud to be in his presence, to hear him speak. It was very illuminating. I think this is the best kept secret in the, in the, in the world at, at this point in time because I'm looking at this and equity, justice, fairness, and love for all, that's what's needed. And it was really good to get a laugh out of His Holiness when I said sometimes the best way to bring people together is just food and he said just food and we had a laugh so it was very special. I love His Holiness. This. This mosque is a beacon of hope and friendship for our whole community, so I'm, I'm just full of hope and love today. It's good to know that, uh, uh, that we have leaders like him um, serving millions of people, you know, uh, bringing people together, uh, you know, talking about the idea that we can be one, that, um, that all religions are important. Um, it was just amazing and inspiring. Uzur's tour and the historic prayer duel between the Promised Messiah salam, and John Alexander Dowie was featured by more than 400 media outlets in 13 countries, including the Associated Press, Washington Post and ABC News. On Sunday, 2nd of October 2022, Hazur left Zion for Dallas in the state of Texas, 
for the inauguration of the Bat al-Ikram Mosque. As Huzur arrived, the young and old alike had gathered at the mosque to welcome their beloved Khalifa. On Monday, Hazur unveiled the plaque to mark the inauguration of the Bat al Ikram Mosque. In the evening, a few minutes before namaz, Hazur graced a barbecue organized by the local Jamaat as a means of love and encouragement. The following day, aside from Hazur's regular engagements in Mulakads, Hazur also planted a tree and inspected the mosque's beautiful premises. On Wednesday, Hazur held separate mulakats with Wakfino boys and girls aged 12 and above. The first mulakat was with Wakfat Eno. After a formal session, Wakfat Eno had the opportunity to seek Hazur's guidance on a number of issues. Assalamu alaikum. My question is, when someone dies, we say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Why do we also say this when we lose a material belonging? Do you know the meaning of it? I don't know. We are for Allah, to whom we have to return. So, Quran says that not only when somebody dies, you say that whenever you lose anything, or you are in difficulty, you are in a problem, then you say, and that will remind you of the power of Allah Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala will always remain in this world, and every other thing has to die, to say, in Allah when I rise. So, it also have very deep meaning as well. When sometimes you, you lose something, and you have forgotten something, you have kept it somewhere. If you say, Inna lillahi wa inna 
it so happens, and it has happened on so many occasions with me and with other people as well. When we say in Nairla, when I rise down, then immediately either we find that thing or it comes into our mind that yes, I have kept that thing in there. So it also works to find the things to save you from your loss. So this is the prayer that if a person dies, I was relying on him. I am very sad on his demise or her demise, but Allah is always there. He will protect me. He will save me. See, the same thing happened when the father of Muslim Allah Salatu Wasalam died, and he was very much worried because he was not working anywhere, and his source of income was from his father. Then. When he was very, very prayed, oh God, what will I do? After saying in Allah, when I rise, then immediately it was revealed to him by Allah Taala that Allah Taala will be kafin of you. Is not sufficient for his servants. You are Allah's servant, so Allah is sufficient for you. So this is how Allah Taala comforted him. So this is why we say this. This is the prayer which gives you comfort. Right. This is why we say in Allah and in Rajam. Okay. Sufi theology claims to promote nearness to Allah through their spiritual practices. My question is: Are there benefits in Sufi practices and customs that promote nearness to Allah? You see, there was no Sufism during the time of the Holy Prophet sir. So. Was there any Sufi at that time? No. There was no Sufi during the time of the four rightly guided Khulafat, Khulafat Rashidin. There was no. After centuries, this thing started, and when it started, it was because at that time Khilafat was not the spiritual Khilafat; that was worldly Khilafat, and the Khulafat of those times. were afterwardly gains and uh, khalifa was not the chosen khalifa by the community but they inherited it so this is why at that time the group of people stood up he say we are the spiritual people and we tell the people that what is the actual spirit of your religion and what is the spirit of prayers right and how you should pray how should you should bow before allah how you should practice the commandments given in the holy quran and this is how they started and they started explaining teachings of the holy quran so this is how it all developed but now after the coming of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who came to revive the religion of islam according to the prophecy of the holy prophet of islam sallallahu alaihi wasallam right now there is no need of any sufi no need to follow any sufi even i remember once i explained in my khutbah the verse allah nur samawati wal ars so one of the arab person who was newly converted amdi he said i was the follower of sufism and now after having listened to your khutba i can say there is no bigger sufi than the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and how he has explained the holy quran how he has explained the teaching of the holy quran so we don't need any other sufi now and now the khilafat is also rightly guided as long as it will remain as it is then there is no need of any sufism so it was the requirement of the past not the present exactly right okay as a mother of a wakfino baby boy are there unique practices to focus on in my son's early years to strengthen his pledge to serve the jamaat so how old is he he's nearly 15 months 15 months now first thing is that you pray for him and your five daily prayers and offer two rakats nafal for him that allah taala make him a true waqf now 
right? And then as he grows up, you teach him about the morals and teachings of the Holy Quran and Islam. And uh, show your own example. You both husband and wife should set their own example before their children so that they will know that our parents are always offering five daily prayers. They read the Holy Quran. They try to understand the meaning of the Holy Quran. They are the thorough example of the teaching of the Holy Quran in Islam. And they are the true followers of Islam Ahmadiyyat. Then they will grow up in that atmosphere, environment, and then they will become a good work for now. It is commonly said that interracial and intercultural marriages face many challenges. What is Ahmadiyyat's view on interracial and intercultural marriages? You see, if there are interracial and intercultural marriages, that's good. But both sides should be very much tolerant. The thing is that Holy Prophet says that before you choose any match, you should try to choose somebody who is spiritually good, who has good religious knowledge, right? And is firm and staunch Muslim. So if you consider all these things, both parties, boy and girl, then no matter whether it's interracial, intercultural, or within your own culture or race, you will uh, enjoy your life. And always keep in mind that nobody is perfect. Everyone has some shortcomings in them. If you are tolerant, each of them is tolerant and close their eyes, tongue, and ear to listen anything bad about each other or you say anything bad to each other, then you will have a good married life. If different cultures are joined together in Ahmadiyya, then that will be a very good Ahmadiyya environment. And that is what we should try to create. Right? That is what I believe, and that is what Islam says. But people have some shortcomings in them. Sometimes they do not behave in this manner. Whenever we are choosing our match, we normally say, girl is well qualified, boy is well qualified. They are earning substantial money. They have lucrative job, right? So instead of seeing all these things, we should try to see that a person has good religious background and is a practicing Muslim. The questioner also asked Hazur if the Mubarak Mosque in Islamabad reminds Hazur of the hut he stayed in when he lived in Tamale in Ghana. Because of the shape of the mosque, you mean? Yes, Hazur. Okay. <laughs> no, that Mosque Mubarak's architecture is much, much, much better than that hut. <laughs> <laughs> Following the mulakat with Wakfat Eno, Wakfino boys aged 12 and above also had the honor of having a mulakat with Hazrat Amir al Mu'mineen, Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Israel Aziz. My name is Numan Ahmed Farid from the Minnesota Jamaat. In many of Hazur's responses to my letters, Hazur has advised that punctuality in namaz and talawat is a key to success. Why are people like Elon Musk, the founder of Tesla, and Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, who don't offer the namaz or remember Allah, so successful and wealthy? Acha, do you know what is the purpose of your life? To worship Allah? Yes. Just recently, in my last sermon, I also said the same thing. And what is the purpose of their life, who are worldly people? to attain a worldly you see, position? When Allah Ta'ala created Adam, at that time, Satan refused to bow before Allah or those to submit 
before Adam, right? What was the reason? Arrogance, the worldly desires. He challenged Allah Ta'ala that most of the people will follow me and I will lead them to go astray from the right path, right? And Allah did not say that you cannot do it. Allah says, yes, there will be few people who will be righteous people who will submit to my injunctions and commandments, who will accept my prophets, right? Although they will be small in number, but they will ultimately succeed. Because your purpose is not the worldly desire. Your purpose is to gain Allah's love, right? And a righteous person always tries to gain Allah's love for the life after death. A righteous person will be rewarded in the hereafter. And these worldly people have been rewarded in this world. This is why the Holy Prophet Wasallam said that their right eye is blind. The eye of their religious knowledge and religion is blind. And the left eye is working. That means they will increase in worldly matters. So if your desire is only to gain the worldly benefits, then of course you can leave Nawaz and leave Islam and do whatever you like. But if you believe that there is a life after death and that is an eternal life, then you will gain the love of Allah here in this world and in the world hereafter. Are you not going to school? I am. Are you not good in your studies? You I are? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Do, are you facing any problem in getting your worldly requirements? No? No. You're getting your daily food, you take breakfast, lunch, if you like, then dinner, right? Yes. And you are wearing good clothes. Yeah? So everything of this world is available to you. And you are praying also to Allah Ta'ala. And if you achieve your target, you, what is your target? What do you want to be in future? Uh, a heart surgeon. If you achieve that target, that means you have gained your worldly gain. And apart from that, by going before Allah Ta'ala and praying to Allah Ta'ala five times daily, obeying His commandments, you will also get the reward in the hereafter. Whereas these people will never get it. So now it is in your hands. You have to choose. You want both of the benefits or only one here in this world? What do you want? One or two? Both of them. They are gaining worldly benefits only. And we have been promised by Allah Ta'ala benefit in this world and the hereafter. Okay? So our purpose is not of this world. A moment, a good believer's purpose is to win the love of Allah. And for winning the love of Allah, you will have to work hard for the enhancement of your spiritual level and also service of humanity. Okay? One of the Wakfino boys asked Zur about what can be done in preparation for a world war if it were to take place. You see, first thing is that you pray that it should not happen in your lifetime. At least it can be delayed. Yeah? And secondly, you prepare yourself for the preaching and spreading of the message of Islam. So be determined and promise to Allah Ta'ala that when you grow up, then you will spread the message of Islam. Okay. So if we let the people understand what is the purpose of their life and uh, how should they live their life and try to win the love of Allah, then we can at least, if not completely get rid of this fear of uh, the war, it can be delayed for some time. Yeah. So the ups and downs will come and do come. Secondly, as I already said, every family should uh, also reserve some food for some few months in their houses. 
and youngs are also among them. They should also help their family members, right? Okay. And also pray to Allah Taala. This is the only thing. If you mean that how we can save the world from the war, then pray to Allah Taala. Mm-hmm. If there is anything else, then nothing. We can't do. If the world is determined to destroy it, and the leaders are not trying to get sense, then we can't do anything. Mm-hmm. Right? When we pray for Hazur or Khalifa Waqt, what would Hazur like for us to pray? You should pray that Allah Ta'ala help Khalifa Waqt to discharge his duties so that uh, the burden of the duties Allah Ta'ala has put on the shoulder is properly discharged. So Allah Ta'ala gives them strength and health so that he works properly for the cause of Islam and Amdiyat. And whatever the plans are in the mind of Khalifa of the time, they are completed with Allah's help in shortest possible time, in the best way, right? And Allah Ta'ala also give him the helper, that is Sultan and Nasir, so that a team of helpers can also help the Khalifa work. And Allah Ta'ala also make us the helper of the Khalifa of the time. So that as we know, we also discharge our duties to help the Khalifa work in completing his assignments and tasks and his wishes and his plans. From time to time, I wonder a lot regarding whether Allah Ta'ala is real. Hazur, what steps may I take to see the existence of Allah, the Almighty? You cannot physically see Allah Ta'ala. One thing. Do you know it? Yeah. We cannot. Allah Ta'ala is a noor. Do you pray five times? Have you ever experienced the acceptance of prayers? Yes. Then that is how Allah Ta'ala shows His presence. You prayed to Allah Ta'ala and He accepted it. And you know whatever you achieved is because of the acceptance of prayer by Allah Ta'ala. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And sometime when you are praying and you are in sajda position, then you cry. You cry hard and you feel some satisfaction in your heart. You feel that now my prayers have been accepted. Or Allah Ta'ala will do good for me. That is also one of the signs, the existence of Allah Ta'ala. So, Ahmadis always have their experiences in Allah Ta'ala. Have you ever experienced any acceptance of your prayer? Yeah. This is how Allah Ta'ala shows His face. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, if you have some other question in this regard, then you can ask what you actually want. So, I mean, like, whenever you, like, pray to God and you're trying to say, like, you're wishing for stuff, but it doesn't come true. So, it is not necessary that Allah Ta'ala accept all of your prayers. He's Malik. He says he will accept some of your prayers and sometimes some of your prayers are not good for you. But if you are praying fervently, then Allah Ta'ala will not let it go waste. Right? Yeah. That will be in your credit account. So whenever you need something, Allah Ta'ala will give it to you. The credit benefit of that one. Right? Yeah. Okay? Okay. 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 आंखें बिछाए आके तुझे सीने से हम अपने लगाए हुजूर delivered the friday sermon from the bait al ikra mosque and so inaugurated the new mosque of the ahmadiyya muslim community in dallas usa आज آپ کو اپنی مسجد کے افتتاح کی اللہ تعالیٰ توفیق عطا فرما رہا ہے گوشت کی تعمیر تو کچھ عرصے پہلے مکمل ہو گئی تھی لیکن اس کا اب رسمی افتتاح ہو رہا ہے یہاں مسجد کے طور پر شروع میں ایک حال بنایا گیا تھا 
لیکن اب باقاعدہ مسجد آپ نے بنائی ہے بہرحال اب ایک خوبصورت اچھی مسجد بن گئی ہے اور گنجائش کے لحاظ سے بھی کافی وسیع ہے اللہ تعالیٰ ان سب کو اس مسجد کا حق ادا کرنے کی توفیق عطا فرمائے جنہوں نے اس مسجد کی تعمیر میں حصہ لیا اللہ تعالیٰ کرے کہ مسجد آپ نے خالصتاً اللہ تعالیٰ کی رضا کے حصول کے لیے بنائی ہو اور آن حضرت صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے اس ارشاد سے فیض پانے والے ہوں جس میں آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے فرمایا کہ جس نے اللہ تعالیٰ کی رضا کے حصول کے لیے مسجد بنائی اللہ تعالیٰ جنت میں اس کے لیے ویسا ہی گھر بنائے گا اللہ تعالیٰ کی رضا کے لیے بنائی مسجد کا کام مسجد کی تعمیر کے بعد ختم نہیں ہو جاتا بلکہ اللہ تعالیٰ کی رضا کا انسان تبھی حامل بنتا ہے جب اس کے حکموں پہ چلنے والا ہو اس کی عبادت کا حق ادا کرنے والا ہو حقوق العباد ادا کرنے والا ہو وفا اور اخلاص سے دین کو دنیا پر مقدم کرنے والا ہو اپنی بیت کا حق ادا کرنے والا ہو 